we've got a beast of a motherboard right here. So that's what this is about. What's up everybody, the Poets here. Hope you're doing well and staying safe. And we have a lot of interesting things happening in the PC world. We have the new AM5 platform by AMD and it's pretty serious and kind of runs a bit hot. And then we also have the 40 series dropping and with a new platform comes new expenses, right? So if you do want to get on this new AMD platform, you will need a new motherboard because there is a new socket. It's an LGA socket. So the pins are actually right on the motherboard instead of the previous AMD line where it was called AM4 and the pins were actually on the CPU. Now, because of this, AMD has also kind of increased the capacity for RAM, meaning more bandwidth, right? So they went from DDR4 RAM to DDR5. And it's a physically different socket as well. So you can't use your old DDR4 RAM in the new AM5 motherboards. So there's a number of things that are happening. So if you do want to upgrade or start fresh from to this AM5 platform, you will need a new motherboard. You will need new DDR5 RAM and obviously the CPU of your choice. Now, there are some interesting things happening where some retailers like Micro Center is actually giving free DDR5 RAM if you buy a 7, 7,000 series CPU basically, but it's not all of them. So it's just the Ryzen 7 and the Ryzen 9 uh, as of you know filming right now. And they are giving this, which is pretty cool. It's the G-Skill Flare X5. So it's 32 gigs of DDR5 RAM at speeds of 5,600 megatransfers or megahertz, uh, depending on who you're talking to. And this is uh, not cheap. So the sticker here says $249.99 free for buying a Ryzen 7 or Ryzen 9 on the 7000 series. So that's pretty darn cool. 32 gigs is the nice sweet spot for gaming, uh, kind of on the low end for productivity tests, depending on what you're doing. Um, I do recommend 64 gigs for those that are heavily into gaming and productivity workloads. And if you need more than that, you're gonna know already. So 16 gigs was kind of the, 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 the base for most, but now we're in 2022. Uh, when I'm playing a game like Star Citizen, I'm easily using like 38 gigabytes of RAM used while playing and having like Discord and a couple of web tabs open. So uh, it depends on your game, it depends on your workflow. When I'm editing 4K video, I could easily hit 70, 80 gigabytes used on my Threadripper system. So again, depends on your use case. Now, Kingston did send me some faster RAM than what came for free. Uh, it, it's not much faster. This is 6,000 mega transfers, uh, which is pretty cool. And the main difference that you'll see with these, this is the Kingston Fury uh, RAM, uh, is that there's something called Infinity Fabric with AMD processors. It's very different from Intel. So Intel basically, long story short, they make one big processor, right? But they're kind of limited in their core count capacity. That's why you don't really see them in the high-end desktop area, uh, really competitive like Threadripper it was, you know, 32 cores, stuff like that. Um, even the 7950X for AMD has 16 cores, 32 threads. Intel's kind of maxing out at eight cores right now. Uh, and then they're adding in these little efficiency cores. Um, so not real true traditional cores that we're used to, but they're, they're pretty cool. Uh, and and they, they have their use, I will put it that way, and their downsides too. But because AMD is using smaller cores and kind of adding them up, uh, they have what's called infinity fabric that kind of connects these little cores together. And that Infinity Fiber can be overclocked, it can be underclocked and all kinds of stuff, but it's heavily dependent on the speed of the RAM. So if you have 6,000 megahertz RAM or mega transfers RAM, uh, then that Infinity Fabric will actually be at 3,000 megahertz, which is the ideal sweet spot. If you go faster than 6,000 and um, there's plenty of RAM that's coming out and out right now that is faster than 6,000, then it kind of affects how the Infinity Fabric works. So uh, you all actually have some diminishing returns and you need to do your research. But for the layman, 6,000, that's a sweet spot. If you go faster than that, you're gonna have some reduced performance up until you go faster and like really, really fast, higher end RAM. So this was cool, Kingston Fury Beast RAM. I absolutely love it. And then this is the RAM that came with uh, the 7950X that I got from Micro Center. So very nice, very cool to see that. But the point of this video is this. So uh, it is new platform, so that's why I wanted to give a little bit of background uh, for this. This motherboard is serious. Uh, it is the MSI Meg X670E 
And so all of the, the newer motherboards that are coming out right now, they're pretty much all the E lineup. There's some other variants too, but the E will have pretty much the, the gold standard for all the capabilities of this new lineup for the AM5 platform. Uh, the Ace is pretty much top tier. This is not a cheap motherboard and almost none of the motherboards that are out right now as of filming uh, are cheap either. So there will be like $125, $150 motherboards coming out that will support the AM5 uh, chipset or platform, uh, but we're not there yet. So this <laughs> was $800. So I'm gonna show you what an $800 motherboard actually packs, which is kind of nice. So let's just get into it. So I do love the way that this opens up. Look at that. It's kind of like a, a nice, well thought out way of doing things. Uh, but let's, uh, let's get into this. So this is the very heavy, very durable motherboard. I'm going to set this aside right now. And I'm just going to show you everything that kind of comes with this because uh, it's, it's kind of notable. So first things first, one of the things that you will notice is this very large contraption right here. This is actually the uh, M.2 expansion card. So it's for Gen 5 and it actually will hold two M.2 cards, which is really, really nice for M.2 NVMe drives. And it does have its own fan. It's easy to take apart so that you can, you know, stick them in there. And uh, yeah, Gen 5 is no joke. So this is going to be nice for those that are into content creation and you need that additional storage space. So it does have the power right here. And this thing is beefy. And then of course we have the Wi-Fi 6E antenna. Uh, this is kind of nice, stylish. I believe it's magnetic as well. So, but yeah, this is a, this is nice. A very durable cord as well. I, I appreciate that. We also have a number of SATA cables. Uh, I'm not really using uh, SATA SSD drives anymore. Uh, they were nice to have at the time, but they are very slow. You're not going to get much of a difference in performance in many games using a SATA drive versus an NVMe drive, but for content creation, transferring large data files, this is definitely older and um, yeah, I, I just don't use these anymore. So we're going to have a lot of uh, cable accessories for like the hard disk drive lights. <laughs> I don't, it's old school name, but yeah, HD lights right there. Uh, we have temperature sensors, so some thermal probes, which are nice. Uh, this one, I'm not even sure what this is. I'm going to have to read the manual for this. But um, yeah, this is kind of a different style of connector than what I'm used to seeing. So maybe I'll put in the comments what this actually is. We have a number of these little tiny, you know, uh, screw latches for the NVMe drives. And I like these a lot because you don't really need to screw down these fine little screws anymore. It's just a little latch that you put down. So you have your NVMe drive, stick it down and then just pop the latch and you're good. And then we have uh, more RGB, you know, kind of a uh, cabling. This is an interesting cable. I got to figure out what this is. And uh, so I'll get back to you guys on this one. So part of this is read the manual. This is just kind of a first look. Another temperature sensor and then uh, more RGB extension cables. So that's cool. And then, hey, look, quick installation guide. It's good to read these. I'm always big on making sure you read these installation guides because you, you'll be surprised uh, some of the nuances a motherboard may actually have. But also always read the manual for your motherboard because you'll be very impressed of capabilities that a motherboard may actually have. And then more importantly than anything else is the stickers. Now, these are very helpful for cable management. Let's say you have stuffed everything on the back of your case and you don't really want to zip tie everything or whatever you want to do. It's good to use these for labeling because, hey, these are the fans, these are the RGB, red goes to red and all that stuff and, you know, different cabling. Very, very helpful. And I wish that uh, this was just standard in the industry uh, two decades ago. Let's just put it that way. And uh, yeah, so I like these. Very cute. And then this right here, this is the Holy Grail. This is a USB drive that has all of the drivers for the motherboard. So, so nice. No more CDs. CDs are gone. That's, that's beautiful. So, yep. Make sure you don't throw this out, right? It was stuck in here. So you know where that is. So that's it for these little accessories or not so little, but let's get into the motherboard now. So. 
Here we go. This is the bad boy. The piece of hardware of the hour. There are a number of notable things with this motherboard. Uh, first off, the VRMs, they have some serious heatsink action going on right here. And this is a 22 plus two plus one phase power design. So you're gonna be able to get some serious overclocking in here. And I can't wait to really do that. And of course you have the area here to plug that additional power from your power supply unit in here. This is where the DDR5 RAM goes, four sticks obviously. This right here is the Gen 5 NVMe drive area. And then we have three, one, two, three areas for PCI Gen 4.0 NVMe drive. So you have four NVMe drives that can be in here plus an additional two on the Gen 5 speed, which is ah, gorgeous. So typically you would just kind of stick this right here. This right here may confuse some people because normally we're used to this. This is where your you know power supply actually will get stuck. But now there's an additional spot right here because the USB type C is now gonna be powered. So you can actually charge your phones at like 60 Watts right here uh, for the front panel of your case. So that's gonna be so nice. You have your traditional USB 3.0s right here, SATA right here, but then here, like in this, let's uh, move this up. So we have a power button and a reset button right here. And this is very helpful for, say you have this on a test bench, you need to <laughs> fix some of your mistakes and yeah, you may wanna you know press these buttons a couple of times. This right here is nice to see because a build like this, you can easily do like a nice blackout because I love the color scheme, the grays and the blacks and everything. So this switch will actually turn off your LEDs. You don't have to deal with turning them off in the BIOS or using software. And then right here, it's a BIOS switch. So it has multiple BIOS that you can use. So if you break one through overclocking, just switch it over and go back to your normal BIOS. So that's really nice. You have your primary workflow, your stable BIOS, and then flip the switch. And then you have your overclocking BIOS where you're just wrecking shop because again, 22 plus two plus one power phase design, you're gonna to wanna to have some fun with this. Now for the audio, I like the fact that this is a separate area for the audio to reduce any type of you know interference and stuff. You'll see some lower end boards that just have like the, the audio capacitors and all that stuff just kind of open. This is nicely shielded, so you're gonna get some uh, nice, stable, clean audio over here. These are PCI Gen 5.0 slots, so it depends on what your use case is. Most people will just use the top one for 16. Um, if you kind of try to populate all of them, you're gonna get like eight by eight by four, uh, or you can do like 16 by four over here and this one would be zero. So read the manual, you'll see like the different combinations that you can do. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, don't worry about it. Plug your GPU into this one, it's PCI Gen 5.0, which is the newest standard. You're not gonna come close to maximizing the speeds of this though because GPUs aren't fast enough to you know really handle this this bandwidth yet or fully utilize the bandwidth I should say uh, then we do of course have you know our normal ports for you know fan management uh, audio as well these are the uh, temperature sensors right here and that's really nice because for custom water cooling I like to actually have a temperature sensor right in the the, the fluid in the loop and adjust my fan curves based on the temperature of the loop this right here is one of my favorite things. So as you are overclocking or just running into a random issue, having a display showing you a code that you can then look up and say, oh, it's something wonky that I did over here, that will save you a ton of time rather than just having like a red, yellow, blue, red light that many motherboards have. This code will actually give you a detail of, hey, something is wrong over here with this like RAM stick or something. So we do have uh, plenty of areas for pumps, for fans. So. Cooling is not gonna be an issue or finding uh, spots to plug your fans in is not gonna be an issue at all. Now, even though this is the new AM5 platform and it was kind of put out there that all your old coolers are gonna be compatible, that's not the case. So you're going to have to make sure you do your research, you're not wasting your time because the backplate, and you'll notice the back of this is serious, um, that's not coming off, right? That's staying right there. So your coolers that you may be used to that required you to remove the black backplate and use their dedicated cooler um, backplate, yeah, that's not happening anymore. So especially for custom water cooling, many, many custom water cooling water blocks uh, require their own backplate. So uh, as of like yesterday, when I went to Micro Center, they had a ton of uh, water blocks 
four AM4, and not a single one of them are compatible for this, right? Um, many AIOs will be compatible. Many of them will also need a special bracket attachment. So you have to go to those manufacturers and say, hey, I now have an AM5 motherboard. I bought your AIO, it's not compatible. Do you have a attachment that you can send me or sell me or whatever? And many of them will say yes, right? So just be aware of that. You may need a brand new cooler for this if you don't want to go through that hassle. Uh, but yeah, that's something that you need to be aware of. The rear I.O. selection is a big reason why people will pick one motherboard over another. This has an ample selection of options right here, which I love. You'll notice the three buttons up top. This one is a smart switch button, so you can actually kind of uh, program this as you like. Uh, this one in the middle is actually the flash BIOS button, which is very, very helpful, especially if you say you like brick your motherboard and have to like flash your BIOS back to something else. Yeah, very helpful to have. And then the clear CMOS button. Um, yeah, if you're overclocking, you're very familiar with clearing CMOS and it's just nice to have that easily accessible in the back. So you don't have to like find some like weird thing to jump on the, uh, on the motherboard. This right here, and this, these are type C ports. So they're the USB 3.2 gen two, um, two by two, sorry. So they're 20 gigabit per second uh, transfer speeds, which is so nice to see. Now the ProArt uh, motherboard that actually has 40 gigabit, uh, which is, uh, I'm a little jealous. Uh, and that's a cheaper motherboard, but not many people have a use case for that. That's just like a so nice to have kind of thing, but not fully needed yet. This one is 10 gigabit right here, and this is also the display out as well. So uh, the, a technically display port. Then we have all of these type A ports that are all 10 gigabit as well. So that's USB 3.2 Gen 2. And then this port right here, oh, so nice to see this. This is their what they call their 10 gig Super LAN. But yeah, so 10 gigabit port for ethernet. And I love it because I actually have a home network with uh, 10 gigabit switch and my NAS is on 10 gigabit. So yeah, I'm gonna be fully utilizing this. This is actually the Wi-Fi 6E capabilities right here for your antenna. And then over here is your audio setup and it's a kind of a beefy audio setup with its own you know shield right here to really keep things nice and crisp as well. So I love, absolutely love the rear IO on this thing. So in the end, what is this beast of a motherboard really going to be used for and by who? Well, so the MSI X670E Ace is top of the line, right? So, you know, yes, enthusiasts, yes, enthusiastic gamers, yes, content creators. There's, there's a lot of capabilities for this motherboard. If you are a gamer, you're, you're fine with this for many years to come. Content creator, you're fine with this because of all the high transfer rate speeds for all the PCI Gen 5.0, 4.0, and in outs as well. You know, having the USB C 20 gigabits per second, fantastic. Um, so, this is just kind of the all round beast of a motherboard, and you're paying for that as well. You know, so $800. It's not for everybody, you know, maybe some people want to wait until the $125, $300 motherboards become more readily, readily available. Uh, but this motherboard is kind of an investment and does cost more than the 7950X processor that's going in it as well. So in the end, it's kind of up to you, all right? And uh, this is going to be a fun motherboard to overclock on as well. So overclocker, overclockers rejoice. <laughs> Uh, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. Uh, I will be using this in a couple of different builds to really test it out. And maybe I'll do some follow-up videos, obviously on TikTok, Instagram, and uh, YouTube as well. Uh, specifically YouTube Shorts. I'll be doing a lot more on that uh, for this motherboard uh, for the next uh, month, most likely. So uh, thank you again for watching. If you like this video, you know, let me know in the comments below. And uh, hit that like button, hit the share button, hit the subscribe button. And uh, I will see you guys in the next one. There's going to be a lot of them on this. Peace.